Welcome to another edition of Melina the Talk Show. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today we're going to be discussing R. Kelly controversy and also people say a lot of what they wouldn't do and what they wish they would. Well, today we're going to get into it and this is a special edition of Producers Chat. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. <music> Watch this woman's show. Welcome to Melina the Talk Show, where we talk about things that everyone thinks about but rarely ever says. And I want you to make sure you turn into Melina because yeah. she's a friend of mine. special edition of Producers Chat today where we're going to be talking with co-producer Adia Bell. Adia, come on in. Hey girl. Hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know, your new phrase, not I me. I am not me before tea. Yes, tea is a good thing. <laughs> tea is a great thing. <laughs> and we're about to spill the tea. We are about to spill the tea. Yes, on Mr. R. Kelly. We're yes. going to weigh in. You know, there's a lot going on and it's just so sad because he's such a talented artist. He's very, very talented. He is. You know, I've loved his music since 1994 when it first came out mm -hmm. with Bump and Grind. I literally and, and grew up all, with his music. Exactly, exactly. We all did. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> I, stepped, I stepped in the name of love and yes. I have seen nothing wrong. <laughs> what? It was, uh, uh, right? Or re he reminded you of your Jeep? Right. Yes. Yes. I always had an issue with that song. I had an I issue like, with that song too. I was like, because I was like, how do you liken a woman, a nice soft woman, to a, a piece of machinery. Yeah. An issue with that one. But my favorite of his, uh -huh. I believe I can fly. Yeah. And, and that I, one two Grammys. It did. And I had to tell my daughter yeah. that she could no longer sing it. I, exactly. Yeah. And because we cannot support that. You no. know, as much as we grew up and loved it, it's there has to be a point where it's not okay. His behavior as a role model mm -hmm. is not okay. Yeah, he's he's I don't, he But you know what? I had a friend of mine who told me, who's actually directing this segment, that at the end of the day, he has been telling us who he is from the beginning. He called he really himself has. the Pied Piper of R&B, and the Pied Piper is the legend of luring children. That's true. Right? That is true. And then he wrote AJ Nothing But a Number, and right. married the singer. At 15 years old. At 15 years old. Yes. Had her line about it. Right. Did you watch the, the special? I watched the special, Dateline. the Dateline special. I watched the uh, Lifetime, special. the Lifetime special, and I gotta say, <clears throat> I don't think there was ever a time where I didn't believe. But I remember, I believe I was in college. No, yeah, I think I was in college when the video came out. Okay. The alleged, we have to say that the alleged video. Yes, when the alleged video came out, and I think, and we're hearing it now, right, where women are saying, "Well, I would never do that." You know, mm -hmm. I, I, there's no way in the world I would never let a man treat me like that. And, you know, until you go through it, until you, you go don't know. It, you really don't. No. You really don't. Because you and I have talked about it, right? We Where have talked about it. I am beginning my acting career, and I was a child actress, as you know. So I don't know if, let's say, a prominent person of the influence of somebody that I, I admire. I don't want to mention any names because I don't want to start any rumors. Right, right, right. right. But I don't, I don't know if at 16, if a person with the influence of someone who could make my career, mm -hmm. if he charmed me yeah. as, in the same way, if I would have been able to say no. I don't know if I had the emotional maturity to say no. So I can't even say at my age now, which is a question mark, <laughs> exactly, it mm -hmm. is. Um, I can't say now if I, I can't say that I wouldn't have done it. Right. You know, I remember before I got divorced, I said that if it's man cheat on me, I'm out, mm -hmm. and I didn't go out. So I don't know. I, I say that now, but <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. I don't know. You just never know until you're in that situation. Now, yeah. let me go back a little bit because as a proud graduate of the University of Virginia, wahoo wah, shout out to the who's, <laughs> I graduated from the pre-law program at the mm -hmm. University of Virginia. And I was, a, I was supposed to take over my family's law firm and then clearly career path changed. But <laughs> with that being said, 
under due process, we have to still say alleged because right. in a court of law, he was actually he acquitted he of, was the charges of the charges in 2008. Yeah. He was acquitted. So, but okay, so on the lifetime special though, a juror said that he believed R. Kelly because of the way that the girls looked. And essentially saying because they were dressed like, oh, I don't know if we have to bleep that later, uh, <laughs> but since they were dressed like that, isn't that, isn't that crazy? Wow. And then I also, also on the video, they were saying that he prolonged the trial. Because, you know, we have a right as Americans mm -hmm. to have a speedy trial. Right. And he chose not to have a right. speedy trial to, to make sure that she was she got older. Right. So that when the jury finally saw her, she was no longer a child. Exactly. Exactly. So, But then let's fast forward to what, these alleged charges. Alleged Just charges. Just say alleged because <clears throat> I believe in due process. Mm -hmm. um, and on he the, was found innocent. He was found so. innocent. Now, the interesting thing is that on the Dateline special, mm -hmm. what they talked about was that they had two women who were in their 30s. Yes, ma'am. Two women in their 30s oh, living God. this life. Yeah. Yes. Well, with now, jobs, with the whole nine, they moved into his house. One of them moved into the house in Chicago. Another one moved into the house in Atlanta. One only stayed three weeks. And she was like, this is, she said something like, there's some room, a black room, a room that was just, black and she said she did unspeakable things in that room that she would never like I've heard crazy things so there on. was this book that leaked about one of the survivors yeah and she started the relationship at 16 mm -hmm. and for all intents and purposes she thought he she was his woman yeah and she unspeakable things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I, now I can say now there's no way in God's creation. No. But again, at 16, I don't know about my emotional state. I would say that I did have, I would hope that I, I, I would hope. I and mean, that's all I could say is I would hope that at 16 I had this, the, the forthright to say no. You would hope. I would but you, hope, but, but you, you never know. know. And yeah, that's so the thing. Point, so at the end, but you know who does know? Do you know who did know he was wrong? He did. He did. Our, yeah. the, our, our, the aura. The aura. The aura. The aura. Now, he, he was knew. wrong. He right. knew he was dead wrong. He knew for he all was that. Dead Especially wrong. one of them, he, he was like 40, 41 at the time, and he knew the girl was 16. Well, Alita was 15, he right. was 25. Right. Okay, so 25, 15, knew. 25, but 16, 40, we doing Come too on, much. We doing too much. Do way too much. Well, they were And then she the made, special. he would send, oh, let me change. He okay. said, the girl said that he would make them while they were. Say what now? He would make them say how old they are and call him daddy. Tell daddy how old you are. Yes, that is what that happened. That's what all the people on the Dateline special said. And then the lady said, well, and did you say Dateline? it? And she was like, yeah, that was Dateline. And she said, well, did you say it? And she was like, yeah, I had to say it. And he was like, say it again. And again, I'm 16, I'm 16, I'm 16. Yes. See, so, okay, so uh, here, there's, here, there's a mental there's, problem there's, there. there. Absolutely. There is something and, really, really wrong. And so did you if see the 20 or hear the 20 minute uh, song he wrote? Afterwards, hmm. oh dear, is it time for a break in? Because that's some tea. <laughs> I think it might be. Yeah. So we are going to take a break, and we'll be right back about the song. Welcome back to Melina the Talk Show. Today we're talking about the R. Kelly situation and about how we think that we would never do something in a certain situation, but you never can tell until you're actually in it. My special guest today is co-producer Adia Bell. Hello. And we are talking about the song. The song. The song. So, I don't know if you guys have seen this or heard this. Um, I haven't heard it. I just saw the lyrics. But he has an entire song, 20 minutes. And I know his lawyers were scrambling because... The song is called I Admit It. I Admit It. He, right. Listen to the chorus. I'm not going to sing. I admit it, admit it, I admit it. I admit it, I did it, I did it, yeah. I admit it, I did it, I admit it, I did, did it. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to take that to mean that he did it <laughs> and he admits <laughs> doing it. Well, and So that's what's so interesting about it. He literally admits to everything except he, there's even a part of the song where he talks about his own molestation, which is not an excuse. You cannot abuse people just because you were abused. That's no, not okay. That's not okay. There's nothing about that that's no. okay. Um, so he talks about how 
he bleeped his girlfriend's best friend, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how he did the same in the back of a bend to Benz. his uh, um, brother's girl. Or yeah, his, no, his best friend's his girl. His best friend's girl. Yep. Um, and he admits that he is messed up in the head. Or no, he didn't. Nope. He I said mean, he needs a cool. hug. He needs a hug. He said he needs a hug. After all that, he needs he needs a hug. Now, these victims, on the other hand, because they're right. victims. They because, are. again, he was a grown man who right. knew... He knew the ages of those babies. Yes, especially when he asked them to tell them. And one of them even said, when he asked to, now this is alleged because we're not in a court of law, but according to her, she said that he asked her to give me a kiss. And she said, no, I'm not going to kiss you. And he said, well, can I have a hug? And, now and so she gave phone. him a hug. And then during that hug, he, he reached in and started kissing her. A man need more than a hug. But, I mean, you see, we're, we're just... I said, I my just, lawyer said, don't wow. say nothing. But I can tell you, I've been set up. I admit it, however, since the first day that without knowing, I signed my publishing away. Now we're talking about... So she, that's that victim mentality that mm-hmm. people try? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well, yeah, but I'm a victim. No. He's he may victim. have been a victim when he, he was a, a child. perpetrator. There you go. He's not the victim. He's no longer the victim. No, no. No I, longer I, You know, I just... I know that his label has separated ties from him. Sony Records, it sure did. Uh, people have Lady Gaga, John Legend, and he was on the show. Um, denounced him. Mm-hmm. I forget the other one. Who was it? Lady Gaga, John Legend, and uh, I'm not sure. Somebody else denounced him. And um, was it Pharrell? I think. Celine Dion. Celine, Celine Dion. Dion. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was, you know, people are coming out in droves saying enough is enough. And it's a shame. It is. And, you know, one of the questions on Dateline was that why is it taking so long to to come out? They said it. What do you think? Because I'm a producer and you guys normally don't see me and you see her, I'm going to say it. Because they were black. And that's what they said. Because 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 I guarantee you, and y'all can write and comment and whatever else that you want to do, and that means you're watching the show, so we don't care. Um... But at the end of the day, if these had been little girls with blue, ha- blue eyes and blonde hair, he would have been in jail. Under the jail. Under the he jail. He would have been but you dead know what? by I'm now. I'm not even going to blame of it. going on in the jail. Right. He would have been killed. And I'm, I'm not going to blame it on the majority. No. Because we, as a people, also accepted that behavior. Continued to buy his song. Mm-hmm. Continued to support him. And could swept it under the rug. Under just, the rug. just acted like it didn't exist. When he... When he married Aaliyah the first time, we should have said, say, right. say what? There should have been a side eye then. Right. Especially singing a song, AJ, nothing but <laughs> telling it. He, tell he it. told the truth. He told it. And the fact he that he's like, truth. I told it and nobody did anything. And nobody, I'm keep on doing it. Because that's a learned behavior. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I, I believe in the power of teaching someone how you want to be treated. And what yes. we told him and what we taught him is mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want as long as we can step in the name of love. Exactly. Period. Exactly. It's a so. shame. And, and, you know, people say that they would never, that they would never. I mean, these women mm. were 30 years old. I'm sure they had jobs. They had families. I'm sure they did not they ever think that they would do, you know, be involved in something like that. They needed a best girlfriend. They did. A and good, good best girlfriend because you can have a best girlfriend. But if your friend would not stop you, she's not a best girlfriend. But then you also have to think about it. I mean, I can, I'll personally speak to this. Whew, just so real. <laughs> so real. But being in the industry for... A lot of years. years. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to say how many, but mm-hmm. a lot of them. Um, there are people with influence and power. They wield that, and yeah. they dangle that in front of no matter what. Unless you're A-list, like yeah. One Name Wonders, there's always room for growth. And, you know, we look, we're supposed to help each other intrinsically. Human beings have to, we're not islands, we have to help each other. Right. So I personally am a believer that if someone says they want to help, I'm going to believe, okay, you're going to help. Well, unfortunately, the situation, yeah. it was not, um, it seemed innocent at first with right. a genuine desire to put me in this movie. Okay. Tell the story. Whew. Tell the story. Tell the story. You don't have to use names. Okay, I can't use names. Right. I won't use names, but it was this movie. And I was like, okay, well, you know, that'll, that'll you know, certainly be a, a next prominent step, actor. A prominent actor. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I had this certain car at the time. This car was... The car saved it, your life. It was, this car <laughs> saved my life, and it was scotch tape and the car that saved my life. It's the scotch tape car. <laughs> because I was visiting... I, 
Friend of real mine. quick, I'm not laughing at you, but I just got to say okay. car because I, I had a car with a head. It was only held up by a stick. So we've been, we've all been there. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> scotch tape car. So I, I wanted to be in the movie so I could upgrade from a scotch tape car. Right. So, and literally scotch tape. So I went to visit one of my dear, dear, sweet friends, Dr. Dumas, up, and she lives about an hour, hour and a half away. So scotch tape car, got there, I spent the night at her house, we had breakfast, everything was great, and then I drove home. And I was supposed to meet him a little bit later, 20 minutes away. I got, me and the scotch tape car, we got from an hour and a half. <laughs> I got home, changed my clothes, and was on my way, got one mile, and I started to hear some drag, 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 drag on the ground. I was like, oh, the tape. The tape, because I was holding some stuff up underneath the hood. So I had to stop at the grocery store and get some tape. Mm -hmm. Literally that big, the clear tape. The line was long. I had to find the tape. The line was long to check out. <laughs> By the time I got back out to the parking lot, then I actually had to get under the car and scotch tape the car. <laughs> so by the time I did all that, and it's, it's ridiculous, but it's true. By the time I did that and I got to where I was supposed to get, it was, it was done. Everything had taken place. So the part that you, the, the part that I'm gonna, in, I'm gonna interject. Mm -hmm. He asked you, in uh, if you were if for you to be in the movie, he asked you for something, mm -hmm. right? And you originally mm -hmm. agreed in your naivete, and the Scotch guard tape. And what he asked you to do was, yeah, it was, way it, was out. it was, it was, it was way out. outrageous, outrageous. It was, and the fact that I even contemplated it, yeah, it was. But I needed a better, I didn't want to keep driving with the scotch tape car. Right. And this would have taken my career to so the next level, right. and I would have been able to get, you know, a Honda. Right. I, I, right. <laughs> it might scotch have been tape. a Honda. Yeah. Right, without scotch tape. Yeah. A new car. So, um, but, and but she, I, I she never would have that. thought about that I would have ever put myself in that situation, but yeah. I did. But I thank God that that scotch tape car, because my, remember, the scotch tape car got me 80 miles back and forth right. just the day before and that same day. The fact that it could not get me seven to ten it miles, that somebody else was looking out it for meant you. that I was not supposed to be you there. You supposed to be there. And I'm so glad. And I, I was able to maintain my integrity. And my, but the thing is, and we're talking about when people say, oh, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that, I wouldn't do that. Come on, I would never. I, no. I would not have ever thought about that. I, I mean, to, five I, soap operas, yes. you know, films. I, so, I mean, like, I, there's not, I wouldn't do that in my right mind. And I thought I was in my right mind, but in that moment, in desperation, and I'm not saying like, you're... No, I wasn't desperate. No, I, I know just you didn't want to have a scotch tape car anymore. Exactly. <laughs> well, for me, like I said, with my divorce, so I married someone I'd known since I was 11 years old, right? And we were best friends, got married at 22. He was my everything. I graduated from USC. I had a job. I was good. I, I was... I, I was good, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But that divorce shook me so much, and at the end of it, I had a child, Right? So I had less than half the money. Well, no, I had half the money that I had before. Mm -hmm. And plus, I was still paying his car note, still paying for an apartment, still paying for everything, including even though he was with his mistress, right? And it was just me and my daughter. So, so that's why point, you got divorced, because he was... Yeah, two babies. So Two? Girl, that's a whole other segment. Anyway, <laughs> so... Um, it with got the same to the woman? Point, yes, ma'am. So it got to the point where I got paid... And the bank just took back the money they had let me borrow because I had been overdrawn that much, right? So I needed to feed my child. I needed to have a home, right? And so I signed up to, to have a sugar daddy, something I would have never done. And I will say that at the end of the day, because I wasn't 16 and because of everything else and the words I spoke over my life and people have spoken over me and the prayers that I said, I will say that the one opportunity I had to fulfill being a sugar baby, sugar baby, or, sugar baby or whatever it was, <laughs> I just couldn't. You had the opportunity. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I, I, I didn't even, he set up the whole thing. I just, I couldn't do it. Wow. Wow. You but never you know. know what? You never know. You never know. So, well, thank you, Adia, no for being so honest and transparent and, you know, just being real about, you know, we all think what we are going to, what we wouldn't do and couldn't do and sit back in judgment, but when you're in that situation and your circumstance is different, you honestly never know. And to you out there, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something, got something from us being transparent today about, you know, being in certain situations. And, and don't judge. Right. There's enough judgment out there. Don't judge. Just exactly. Help the next woman. It's, ladies. 
We got to help each other. Exactly. Right? And, and fellas, you too. And you too. <laughs> you too. So thank you so much for tuning in. And I um, hope you enjoyed the show. Tune in next time. Please help us by subscribing. Help <laughs> us by liking. Help us by continuing to watch. Thank you so much for your support. We'll see you next time on the Lena's Talk Show. You need to watch this woman's show. Welcome to Melina the Talk Show, where we talk about things that everyone thinks about but rarely ever says. And I want you to make sure you turn over Melina. Yeah, she's a friend. <laughs> 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 <laughs>